Did you know that in the United States, a missed drone registration could cost you up to $10,000? Just don't risk it. In the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to register your drone in 2025, step by step. Now, registering your drone might seem like this daunting task, but it really is not that hard. And I'm going to walk you through the entire process. But before we get into that, let's talk about when we need to have a registration, what kind of drones are covered, and then also what happens if you don't. When do drones need to be registered? Well, anytime you are operating under part 107, or if the drone weighs more than 0.55 pounds, that's 250 grams, and is flown for recreational purposes. I'm going to say that again because that's very important. Anytime you are operating under part 107, regardless of the weight, and if the drone is more than 0.55 pounds and is flown recreationally. A common question that we see is, well, what about my, and pretty much the answer here is all unmanned aircraft that operate in a national airspace system in the United States need to be registered if they fall under one of these two categories that we just talked about, recreational over 0.55 pounds or any weight flown under part 107. Now this includes RC airplanes, FPV drones, nitro helicopters, and your traditional multi-rotor aircraft. If you decide not to register a drone that is required to be registered, what is going to happen? Is the FAA going to come down and break down your door? Probably not. But you do risk being fined for every single flight, every individual flight that has occurred without the registration. Fines could be up to tens of thousands of dollars. Not worth it if the fix is actually only $5, because that's really what it is, only $5. All right, let's get into actually registering your drone. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the FAA's Drone Zone website. This is always going to end with .gov. And if it doesn't, you're in the wrong place. Don't ever pay more than $5 in order to register your drone. And the first thing on this website is that you will need to create an account if you don't already have one. Now, I already have one, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. Once you click login, there is a bit of a notice here that says you are about to enter a government website, don't be afraid. And right here it says drone owners and pilots launch the drone zone owner and pilot dashboard. Okay, click on that. It opens a new window and here's the actual drone zone. Now this is our page. We do have a lot of aircraft in here. We have a couple users that are using the account and we have waivers as well. Now you notice right away, it took us to the part 107 dashboard. If you are a recreational pilot at first, when you get started, it's going to have a couple options. So if you're a recreational pilot, you're going to have to go to the recreational side. If you are registering under part 107, I'm going to show that to you in a second. Let's start with recreational flyer because it's actually fairly simple. Now you notice that ours is actually expired. It expired in 2023. The reason is that we never fly under recreational purposes. So we don't really need to have it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to renew because it's going to be the same process that you would have to go through in order to uh, start a new application. So I'm going to renew here. And then you have a couple of uh, safety guidance information. And it says you're going to fly under the exemption for uh, recreational flyers. You have to have a current registration. That's what we're about to do. Fly only for recreational purposes. Uh, follow the safety guidelines of a community-based organization. We have a couple of videos that talk about this specific topic, so I recommend you take a look at that. Keep your drone within visual line of sight. Give way and do not interfere with any manned aircraft. Fly at or below 400 feet in controlled airspace and with prior authorization. And then fly at or below 400 feet in uncontrolled airspace. Comply with all airspace restriction and then pass trust the safety uh, test, which we provide, by the way, on behalf of the FAA at trust.pilotinstitute.com. So these are really the only kind of rules, if you want, that you have to follow to fly recreationally. So they're pretty simple. I have read and understand these safety guidelines. I'm going to click next. And this is where it takes us to our inventory. Now, the inventory is the place where you are going to enter every single aircraft that you own that you want to have registered. And the way that it works on the recreational side, you're going to have one registration number that is valid for all the drones that you fly recreationally. Very simple. Click on the top right here and add device, which means that we're going to add a drone in this case. And here you have a question at first. It says, does your drone broadcast FA remote ID information? Most drones these days that we have out there, most UAS that are multi-rotors, I'm going to say, are broadcasting remote ID. You can go and check that on the FA DOC, Declaration of Compliance website, to make sure that your drone is compliant. If it is, you're going to click yes right here, and then you're going to have to enter some information about the remote ID serial number. 
That is the serial number that you will see inside of the drone where it says typically remote ID serial number. It starts with three digits followed by a letter. In here, it says device type, standard remote ID or a remote ID module. I'll get back to the module in a second. If your drone broadcasts remote ID natively, it's gonna be a standard remote ID drone. If you have a DJI drone, for example, more than likely it has standard remote ID. That's what you're gonna select. You can put a nickname if you want. Here, let's say that we have a DJI. Let's say we have a DJI Mavic 4 Pro. And we're gonna put that in here. We're gonna fly that for recreational purposes. And then I go inside of the settings and then I find the remote ID serial number. I put it in here. There you go. I made one up. This is completely made up. Add device right here. Now you notice what it is. It's on my list. It's right here. It's added to my list. Now let's add another one. Let's say that we are now adding a drone that does not have remote ID. How does that differ here? Maybe this is something that you built on your own. So you would click uh, home built UAS, for example, put a nickname, a manufacturer. It could be yourself if this is a home built and then the model of aircraft that you're registering. So again, you can give it a name if this is something that you built yourself and then you're going to add it to the list. I do want to go back to adding a remote ID module. How does this work? Drones that are registered or need to be registered need to broadcast remote ID, even under recreational purposes, okay? The way that you comply is by having a drone that already has remote ID or by using a module. We can add a module to our list here and use that module on any of the drones that we want to fly that does not have remote ID natively. This is only true for recreational purposes. What I just said is only true for recreational purposes. So add a device. Does it broadcast remote ID? Yes, because it is a module type of device. It is a remote ID module, okay? We're gonna give it a nickname, who made it, Who? what is the model? Although it says UAS manufacturer, it's really the module manufacturer. And then here's the remote ID serial number that comes on the module in itself that you're going to copy paste right here, okay? And that's it. Now you have in your list a remote ID module that you can use on any of your drones, okay? So we keep adding our devices, create our entire inventory right here. And when we're ready, we can click next. Then you're ready to pay. You're ready to pay that $5 fee that is good for three years. That registration here is valid for three years. And it tells you right here on the side, valid for three years. After three years, you must renew. They'll send you an email to let you know that it's about to expire and then you can renew it very easily. And then also it says here that you must mark the outside of the drone uh, with the registration number. We're going to get to that at the very end. Fill out your information here, put your credit card information, done, and then you'll get a registration card that you have to keep with you uh, at all times when you fly your drone, that with the matching number on your drone, and you're good to go. It's that simple. It's that simple for doing this on a recreational site. Now let's take a look at it on the part 107 side, which is slightly different because under part 107, every single drone is gonna have to have its own registration number and its own $5 registration. So recreationally, $5 for all your drone under part 107, $5 per drone. Also each drone good for three years for that registration. And here, what we're gonna do is manage our device inventory. And what you notice here is that we have a whole bunch of our devices that are already listed. All I'm gonna do is click on add device. And from here, very simple, we can take a look and say, does your drone broadcast remote ID, yes or no? And if it does, is it a standard remote ID or is it done via a module, okay? So standard remote ID here, we would put the name, the manufacturer, DJI, Mavic 4 Pro. And then from here, remote ID serial number, again, you would find it from that list, from that settings inside of your drone. If you have a remote ID module, then you would put the UAS type right here, remote ID module, and then you would put the registration number again for that specific module. If your drone does not broadcast remote ID, you would put it right here. And then you would have, whether it's a home built or a traditional aircraft and then enter all of the information. Add your device, add it to the list, and then it's gonna take you to the checkout page. And at the checkout page, you can pay for the registration. You'll get a new card, a registration card, and a new number. And then you're gonna apply that number onto your drone and uh, essentially go from there. Not all that bad, right? But we're not done just yet. Like I said, these are good for three years. The next step is to mark your drone. So typically you're gonna put your number on top of the drone on the outside. It has to be visible from the outside. 
It cannot be inside of the battery compartment, for example. This can be done with a, a marker, a Sharpie, a label maker, whatever you want to do. You can also be cool and use one of free registration stickers that we offer to the community uh, right here at Pilot Institute. You might be wondering, what's the catch? Well, there's actually no catch. We want to make sure that you know that you have to register, how to register, and then operate your drone safely. Uh, we've done tens of thousands of these stickers over the years. So head over to pilotinstitute.com free, get your free stickers, and we'll see you in the next video.